Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome once again to another episode of The Advocates. Like we said here, five panelists, five topics, various no hobas perspective. For time constraint, I ask is to provoke the debate, taking on those topics too hot to handle by your run of the mail programs. Whilst yours is to sustain the discussions at home, in your offices, and in and outside government. Today, I'll be the pilot, I'll be on the pilot seat and cruising at an altitude of 5,000 feet above sea level with 10 minutes per topic by raising a flag for our heroes, not allowing their labor to be in vain. Uche's advocacy brings things closer home. She exercises a tough love to her parents, which they seem unable to show to their children. Ekene is declaring Nigerian for say, ha, Ekene, when did that one happen? Tokwe Fashua, that is, not Tokwe Alabi, will be tackling the deregistration of political parties and may as well be asking if it is tantamount to a sleight of hand or mathematics, 7 minus 72 or 74 equal 2. Anyway, we'll wait to find out. Chuka is on part three of his trilogy on Lagos, and today he's looking at urbanization. Hmm, I say Chuka for Minister of Urban Development. Anyway, what say you? In the meantime, we tackle the issue that concerns all of us. You know how we roll. After the break, I'll break the ice. The labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. It's a line from the first stanza of our national anthem, but our heroes are hardly recognized until they pass on. And even when they pass on, we seldom celebrate or recognize them. Yet, the labor of our heroes past. For our today, they laid down their tomorrow, dying on song and uncelebrated. Not even a befitting epitaph on their grave to tell generations to come of their great deeds. Here lies the remains of a great soldier who laid down his life so that the rest of us can live to see today. Yet, when civilized world celebrate their fallen heroes in schools, airports, mall, public places and gathering, we wish we came from among them, but fail to learn a thing or two to motivate or celebrate our own. Just recently, we celebrated our Armed Forces Remembrance Day for the year 2020. Rates were laid at various state capitals by the state governors and at the federal capital in Abuja by the president after the annual rituals of fanfare and ceremony, which began with official begging at our various local and international airports by men and women of the Nigerian Legion and members of the Nigerian Civil Defense Corps for 20 naira, 15 naira, and 100 naira. Money that never gets to the family of the fallen soldiers. What other national plans do we have for our fallen soldiers, private or public? If I may ask, if I ask you, now who you go ask? We do not even have accurate records of the ones we have lost since the fight against Boko Haram and insurgency in the northeastern part of Nigeria. Not to talk of the ones we lost during the height of militancy in the Niger Delta. If you ask for the civil war record, then certainly you want to start another world war. How do we mount the labor of our heroes daily, yet fail to recognize that we are alive today because of their sacrifice? How do we deprive our military of weapons to fight by stealing money made for weapons and expect a country of peace and unity? What motivation is there to fight when a soldier whose salaries and allowances are barely paid is confronted in the battlefield by the same people they once arrested and handed over to the state since such terrorists are supposedly re rehabilitated and asked to go and sin no more? How do you console the wife and children of a soldier who died fighting Boko Haram insurgents when the state rehabilitated and set free the killer of their breadwinner when same state cannot guarantee gari and water for such families? How do you expect the parents of a soldier who was killed in battle to feel, seeing the killer of their wards being rehabilitated with tax paid from their sweat? 
Today, I salute the amazing courage, honor, and sacrifice of our fallen soldiers who have and are still giving up their life so we can be free. I salute them and ask that we never forget that for our freedom, they pay the ultimate price. Because they value our lives more than theirs, despite not fulfilling the promises we made to them, yet they fulfilled in full the promise they made to us the day they enlisted in the army. I raise my hand to our true heroes, some dead and some alive. I celebrate you now and always as you battle to keep our country safe, despite the unavailability of modern weapons or the obvious provocation by those who are supposed to shield you in battle. I salute you as you sleep out there on cold nights without sometimes blanket or water, even with money in your pocket, nothing to buy as you relate only with reptiles and grasses. May your sun never set, even in death. Today, I remember you amongst others, too numerous to mention, Colonel Abuali, Flight Officer D.L. Toyam, Group Captain U.N. Akman, Squadron Leader A.O. Swara, Squadron Leader B.M. Baba Ari, Flight Lieutenant Uakeli, Flight Lieutenant E. Owe, Sergeant Obina, Corporal Chidozie, Corporal Dashe, and the hundreds of you who answered the call to defend and uphold our country's honor and glory with your lives. For they may not forget, but we will never forget you. For though our tribes and tongue may differ, in brotherhood we stand today and celebrate you. My advocacy would be until we learn to truly understand, value, and appreciate the labor of our fallen heroes and provide the needed infrastructure and assistance and support to our military and the loved ones left by our fallen heroes, we can never, never truly have a country bound in freedom, peace, and unity. Yeah. Um, Libras, thank you for that. Um, I feel as if I shall keep quiet. Mi minutes of silence after you said that. <laughs> yes, but thank you for that. Like. You know, it was like, um, it, what struck me, because this time I, last I cried year, writing this, yes, yeah, this, I mean, this script. This time last year, you did an advocacy like this. Mm -hmm. again, and I appreciate that you do this, because I feel that the real strength of this advocacy is to continue to keep these uh, heroes in our remembrance. Mm -hmm. um, so I think enough can be said. I even wonder if more could be done in schools for children to encounter, you know, maybe they could even go and visit schools or schools can do their own kind of uh, education for the children so that they can get to know that actually in spite of how badly things are going in Nigeria, there are people who still believe mm. in the call to lay down their life for their nation. Mm. You know, I mean, one of my colleagues <clears throat> did a feature on a soldier who despite the wrong that was done to him was still saying, look, he's a soldier to the core. Despite the fact that they incarcerated him wrongly and his family suffered for it, he still kept saying he, even today he wants to serve because he's a soldier. That's mm. all he knows. The only one thing I'll say though is just quickly to say that the children, the child soldiers that from what I understand that were being rehabilitated, I, I still have a sympathy there. You know, I'm not for putting Boko Haram fighters back to fight with. I can see the injustice there for those who have, you know, lost loved ones in the field. But if these are truly child soldiers that were abducted and then they were, you know, uh, what's the word, indoctrinated, mm. I feel that they, they really suffered enough. They really need to be given their own attention and rehabilitated just because of the trauma they've mm. gone through. I don't think it needs to be seen as taking away from the honor we give to our fallen soldiers. That, that's really all I have to say. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, I, what, Again, you know, thank you for your advocacy. Um, I really, it, it, being a soldier in Nigeria is actually suicidal. There's really no word for it because you don't get the right equipment, you don't get the support you need. They just send you out. They don't even give you food or water. I mean, I came across a video where all these, these soldiers were crying out, begging that, you know, come to our aid, give us food, give us water. So that, that hmm. shows that anybody that goes that route has to be, they have to be considered extremely brave and courageous to be doing that. Um, it is important that we get to know um, what is really going on because we cannot appreciate, I mean, when he was saying we, 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 I was thinking, yeah, who is the, who is the we really? I mean, the go it's the government. If the government does not value these soldiers, then how are we then to even know what they're getting on with? When they die, they don't even want us to know. Right. When, uh, when anything is happening, they don't want us to know. So how are we then supposed to get to know who these people are that are dying for us? We can't even appreciate what they have done for us, what they've gone through, the sacrifices they've made, because we don't really get to hear of it. Thank God for social media, because we're beginning to see what's going on in the background. Like he said, I really believe that 
children should start to know what is going on. They, you know, maybe these soldiers could come, come to their schools mm -hmm. and actually get, you know, give Attend talks assembly, about yeah. these things and, and explain what you know, they, they've sacrificed. I think it's just we are in such a sad state where we can't even appreciate the people that fight for us. Um, we, like you said, we're just giving, uh, bringing back rehabilitated Boko Haram fighters. These, these are the people they're seeing. They're even seeing how better uh, treated that these people are. For instance, I saw how they were giving them water, the rehabilitated ones, giving them water, food, and everything. Meanwhile, our soldiers are crying and begging for these things. There's something very wrong with what's going on in our country right yeah, now. Yeah, there is, definitely. I, I, I keep remembering what um, Boris Johnson said. He said, you know, lock them up and throw away the key. Mm. I co -op. Took the, the terrorists. terrorists. Okay. And I strongly support that. All this rehabilitation they're talking about. I don't understand just it. For the so child soldiers? It's, uh, well, well child the child soldiers, soldiers fine, will deal with them in a, men in, mm. in a, in a, in a, a mental Most correctional people. center or whatever, mm. but they will be incarcerated. Mm. Is it, that's incarceration, yes, isn't it? Yes. Really, it's just not crimes. prison, that's all. Mm. Um, but what I'm saying is, you know, we, I don't know what, what's, we, we, have, we have brought the army down to nothing. Nothing. So I don't blame us for, for not... not knowing what to do about soldiers, mm. what, how to feel about mm. them and their families, mm. because we don't know them anymore. Yeah. Well, I don't think we know what soldiering is about mm. anymore. We used to actually, back in the younger days, I remember Gowan's regime, I knew what soldiering mm. was, you know, and maybe we had just come out of war and that had made our soldiers, mm. we had just <laughs> seen, yeah, they, yeah, maybe, I'm not saying we should have a war, but no, it no. looks like our soldiers haven't seen anything to push them and whatever. But they're fighting all the time, all these terrorism. They're, they're not fighting them. That's the problem. That's what, that's no, what no, I'm saying. They, they, what, they, what's, they, what's there's happening? something wrong. It's, the money is not getting there. It's money. Mm. It's money. Mm. Everything about Nigeria is money. But I almost have a You're not paying people. The, you're not buying. You're mm. not buying them arms. You're not organizing them. I guess money is the only way you show that you value them. Do you know, exactly. do you know but, what but it not means? Cash. Do you know what it means for your commander to sit down in Abuja and buy properties? And with you, allowances that are, are supposed to be yours yeah, exactly. mm. for fighting. Yeah, for if, fighting. If, if, yes, you and know, if you know what it means to drink mud water mm. in the yeah. battleground mm. and yeah, look, I even only for see. you to arrest these same people and somebody says because they are child soldiers and so you rehabilitate them yes. for a month and then you throw them back, back and they come back to confront you. Anyway, that's a discussion for another day before I start crying. Failure to remember is often a reflection of the value we place on something. Well, after the break, Uche challenges the way we show our value for our children. As parents, we all better sit up for this one. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 